Hey everybody, my name is Mary. Thanks for joining me today on this Facebook Live here on the Country Chic Paint Facebook group. Uh, just going to show you a fun little demo using our texture powder today. Uh, July is coming up and I'm sure you guys would like to show some national pride. So we're just going to show you some um, flags. We are a Canadian company, so I've done a Canadian flag here as well as our American flag. So really awesome. You've got a really cool rustic finish. These are just on some Apollon uh, birch panels. We are going to do these on a larger scale today. These are just my testers. Hope you guys like them. It's a pretty simple project and you can do this with um, the kids or like a fun workshop project perhaps. Oh hey Kelly's watching. Hey, Kelly. Kelly's in our shipping team. She's oh, hey. just had You're surgery. <laughs> yeah she just had surgery so she's off recovering now so we hope she's feeling better. <laughs> Oh, and I just wanted to remind everybody, uh, just for watching, you also um, are eligible for our giveaway. All you have to do is comment. Um, what was our question, Sarah? Um, we just want them to tell us about some of their DIY patriotic de decor. So any any kind Ooh, of patriotic yes. decor they've been working on. Banners, yeah. flags, kind of like that. Nice. So just for commenting on that question, what you're going to do, um, you, are, you could be the winner of a pint of texture powder, our awesome artist brushes, um, four samples of paint. These are just the recommended ones. These are the colors I'll be using today. Um, oh, uh, I think I used vanilla frosting just for more of a vintage look, but simplicity is our brightest white, and you could definitely use that too. Um, so you could win four samples of paint, a pint of texture powder, and our artist brushes, just for commenting. Pascal says, hi Mary. Hey Pascal. <laughs> All right, so I'm just gonna start, and I've done a little mock-up here, just because texture powder does take quite a while to dry. This is just the Canadian flag halfway through. We're gonna paint that one and we're going to create the American flag for Independence Day. So the supplies that you're gonna need are texture powder, uh, one to four paints for the flag, at least a dark brown for the, the base layer that we're gonna mix with. And then you're going to need a dish and spoon to mix. I just realized I don't have this. Oh, we're missing a spoon. spoon? We're missing a dish. We'll get one of our handy helpers. Yes. To <laughs> uh, a porcelain bowl. Would be nice, it's easier to rinse out. Um, okay, so a spoon and dish to mix if you're prepared. Um, and then just a variety <laughs> of tools to create this. Um, I like to use these just because they're kind of fabricated for this purpose, they're easy to grip onto. So a palette knife or a putty knife. But I did play around with these demos using like old credit cards or even just the ends of um, our packing cardboard. So that works really well creating a smooth shape. So you just want something with a nice sharp edge. Thank you, Krista. Awesome. And a bowl to mix your texture powder and paint in. Very important. Um, so just you can carve this out with a variety of things. And then you'll want a lint-free cloth with some water because we wet distress at the end to create that rustic effect. So just going to start out here. Um, Mariola says, I would make a Canadian flag for Canada Day. Awesome. Good to hear. Uh, I think I'm actually going to start with the Canadian flag. If you don't mind, we're just going to start painting this one. And then I will show you how to create that first step. So we're going to go in with Devotion. This is a bright red. Um, it's personally my favorite red on the color line. It might be a little bright for some people, but it's a great Canadian red. Um, if you're looking for more of a vintage style, probably pick Cranberry Sauce. It's a little warm and it's got that like old feel to it. So it's really nice. Um, and then also have my vanilla frosting handy. Oh, Erin said she just finished an upcycled map of Canada on reclaimed wood. That's so cool. Nice. That would be cool. Yeah, I, I don't know who, somebody popped into the chat and was asking how to do this very same project, and I was kind of inspired by them being inspired by someone else, so that's kind of how all this works. I've seen a lot of amazing hand-carved, like, where each piece of wood is laid in there, but I don't have the skills to do that. Um, <laughs> so I figured I would just try with our texture powder. So I'm going to go in with the bigger brush here just to cover up some space quickly. And starting with the red. Fun fact about the Canadian flag, it's twice as long as it is um, high, I guess. It's a perfect square, not this one exactly, but the white section is supposed to be a perfect square. So it's kind of cool. Well, a few people are telling us that they love this idea. Awesome. <laughs> So I'm just painting a pretty good layer on. I do plan on distressing back a little bit, so I'm not too concerned if stuff is peeking through. And we're just gonna cover up this dark rose texture powder mix. And I'll go over how I created this step um, with the American flag in just a moment. I just wanted to get this one painted so I can show you the end result at the end of this video. 
And while you're watching, think about uh, what you plan on painting that's a little patriotic or national pride and put it in the comments what you're working on, what you plan to work on, and you could be our winner of today's giveaway. Just a good layer. Um, it's kind of like coloring, filling in the lines because I've already etched them out, so I'm just going to try and keep it away from where I will be painting my white lines. Just a good layer. Everybody who's tuning in now, um, let us know where you're watching from. Yeah, how's everybody? What time have we caught you all? It's 2 o'clock on the West Coast here in BC. Sorry we were a little late to get started. <laughs> We're still reorganizing our filming room, so we're trying to find all of our supplies. <laughs> oh, yeah, totally. I didn't have the red or the white. Kind of important. So. <laughs> Mary Ella says she loves the the red. It's so bright. Yes. I agree. It looks really cool on my phone here. Yeah, yeah. I I'm hope just it... gonna change sizes here to something a little smaller for the maple leaf. Oh, Samantha says I would love to make both flags because she's a BC girl living in Oregon. Nice. Cool. Oregon yeah. is beautiful. We got someone tuning in from Indiana. We got Wisconsin. Hello, hello. Mississauga, Ontario. Hey, Ontario. <laughs> okay. Just filling in the lines. You could do a second coat if you want, um, like a really thick, opaque line. But I kind of like this weathered look. I like the heavier, distressed kind of style for this project but maybe you were trying to suit your own decor, so it might just be better if uh, you fill it in more. Or... Options are endless. And you don't have to do these particular flags if anyone's ever gonna walk, so you can definitely make any flag. This is great for just a design. Um, in elementary school, they brought little clay tablets for everyone to etch designs into and created a giant mural in the hallway. It was really fun to do. So this is kind of a little similar. So if you're working with kids, it's kind of a good project. And just filling that in. Oops. Don't forget, everybody who's just tuning in now, um, leave a comment to tell us about any DIY patriotic decor that you've done. It could be flags, it could be bunting, it could be anything. Um, and we're going to be drawing one giveaway winner at the end of the video. And you're going to get a pint of texture powder, four sample jars of paint here and a set of our artist brushes so that you can replicate these flags that Mary's making today. All right, gonna go in with vanilla frosting. This is my favorite in-between white on like a scale of whites. It's got just a touch of warm tones to it, a little yellow, without being overwhelmingly creamy. And gonna go with the wider Oh, we got Brenda here from Illinois. Hi, Brenda. A little bit of vanilla frosting for the white. So I did a little research because I don't know too much about the Canadian flag history, but it actually took us, we went through quite a few symbols before we settled on the maple leaf. Uh, I think that came around in like 1965 or something like that. We officially decided on this one. So it's pretty awesome. Gina says, super cute idea. I did a birdhouse last week. Oh, nice. And Yvonne says she made a small red, white, and blue USA sign. Cool. Cute. I've just been seeing so many of them out there. People are getting very creative. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to add the little red line. It's not floating. Definitely, <laughs> definitely has a stick. All right. Oh, sorry about the shaky hands. Stop in the mess up. But that's going to be a little imp. Yeah. Alright, before I get that on me, back to the white. Sonia Belanger says, cute. <laughs> And if any of you are just tuning in now and you missed the beginning, here is the end product that we're creating today. So Mary is just doing the painting now, and then she's going to show you later how she created that uh, rustic kind of layered texture. Just filling in the white now is some points to the maple leaf that I've got to work around. 
And don't forget to post comments if you have any questions about what Mary's doing. She's yeah. pretty good at explaining herself, but <laughs> if anything comes up, just If you've got a similar know. project that you were going to take a stab at, now is a good time to just get some of those questions out in the open. Maybe it will save you some headache trying to figure that out. Samantha says she loves the rustic look of both. Wonderful. So I'm not too worried if I get right into that area because it will kind of just distress away. Just trying to get good even coverage. I might go over again with the white just for a little more brightness here. But I should be using a finer brush just to finish it. Oh, Marissa just jumped in on it on the live with us. She used to work in the Can office here with us. Okay. We miss you. Hope you like this idea. <laughs> All right, gonna go in with a finer brush here. Um, Casey said, "What kind of paint? I'm new." Oh, uh, this is our all-in-one decor clay-based paint. Here, I'll show and you the jar. It's being mixed with our thickening medium. Um, embossing kind of plaster, texture powder. It's a water-based paint, pretty durable, distresses wonderfully. You can layer it, you can water it down for more transparent finishes. It's, it can do wonders. Paint fabrics, paint furniture, paint signs, anything. Gina says, I love the use of gray before painting white and red. It adds depth and contrast. Mm -hmm. And Sonia said uh, she wants to make a wooden window frame with a flag like a curtain blowing out of it. Cool. That is a good idea. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, applying. Um, I just decided on texture powder. You'll find out pretty soon when I go to wet distress this one why I chose uh, dark roast. It's kind of like our espresso dark chocolate brown. Yeah, here I'll show you the color in the jar here. That's dark roast. So that's what's going to help us give our moody aging vintage look. If I chose, um, you can mix texture powder with any color of paint, but I was very particular about this one because I knew that it would um, show up when I was done. While I'm painting over it now, you will definitely see more of it. So I just wanted to make sure that it was uh, the right tone of brown. Yeah, so you can see in the finished product here um, where she's distressed it away in the, the raised area. That's how the dark roast is peeking through. Um, let's see. Stephanie said, I'm thinking this would be a great paint party. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. Um, I will be going over the tips for this one. So it's kind of um, like a two-day project or leave overnight and finish. So I'll go over that in just a second here. I just wanted to finish up our white layers and I'll let them sit for just a little bit. I will be switching back and forth just because dry times are kind of got to be worked around with. Um, just filling in the lines. All right. So that's just a very rough, did a quick layer of paint Pretty. over our design. <laughs> gonna let that dry because we're gonna wet distress. Um, I'm gonna let that dry for maybe 10 minutes and then I'm gonna take a stab at it with a cloth. And you'll see the magic. Um, Sonia asked, how do they come up with the names of the paint? Dark Roast Coffee? Um, Roseanne actually picked that one. She's our CEO and I assume it was based off of like a, a dark roast coffee color. Yeah, because it is, it's almost black, but it's definitely got warm brown undertones. It's got a little bit of a muted gray undertone to it. Um, yeah, it's really nice. I do not have texture powder. Don't worry. Okay. Just going to use a giveaway one. Yep. <laughs> okay, guys. I do not have a bowl, and I do not have my own texture powder, so I'm going to use this prize. We will give the winner <laughs> a different one, unless you really want a half-used one, but I'm going to open it up. <laughs> Lesson one in preparedness. Find that seal. Okay. Apologies. All right, so there's our powder. And we do recommend starting with a one-to-one -one ratio and working from there. And I'm not big on measuring, so I'm going to just eyeball this. Bear with me. Uh, start, uh, what should I start with? I like to start with a little bit of powder just so I know how much I've, I've got in the dish already. Careful, it kind of makes a little powder cloud. You can do it quickly. And I want to make sure that I have plenty. So just starting out with that for now. And then I'm going to pour just a bit of dark roast in there. Kind of what I think is my half and half. 
And I'm just gonna use the end of a, of, a, of a brush here. You'll know pretty soon if you don't have enough paint. So this is not enough paint to powder. It's already chalking up a bit. I'm gonna add a bit more. Um, Mariella has a great question. She says, does the powder make the paint lumpy? Uh, well, yes, it does. It just depends on the ratio you mix it to. I'm looking for more of like a slightly thicker icing consistency because I'm going to be slapping it on kind of like icing a cake. Um, a bit more paint here. Put quite a bit of texture powder in. Um, but you will find it that uh, the texture powder, like it, it mixes in nice and smoothly. So yeah. it's going to make it thick and creamy, but it's not going to have like if you were if you're mixing Chunks. too much uh, texture powder in, you'll get kind of a clumpy effect, but that won't really be that's not the desired consistency for creating stencils and embossing. Um, you kind of want something a little bit like this to work with. If it's too chunky, it just won't spread. Or if you're laying down a stencil with your putty knife, it's it's going to create more bubble texture kind of. So just get it that even half and half ratio, one part paint to one part texture powder. Work out all of your clumps. Um, Stephanie said, I wonder how this would look with crackle medium. That is a good idea. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that would be very cool, yeah. Definitely. There's things to play around with for sure. And this is just in our specialty section in the shop, so be sure to check it out. Quite a few of our retailers have played around with it. We have a great tutorial, um, even just using the, oops, sorry, the putty knife with just a bit on a piece of furniture and just doing kind of that creates really beautiful texture when you go to paint over it and then softly distress it. It kind of gives this like, like really rustic feel to it. So it just all depends on what you're using it for. I've used this to fill a couple cracks in um, wood. It's, it's not like the best as like a thick wood filler, but it does quite a bit. So you wouldn't think it would. Melissa said, sadly, we don't have any patriotic decor yet. We just moved to Missouri from New Hampshire last month. Well, hopefully this will give you some inspiration. <laughs> well, and if you win, you might have the supplies to get some things started. So it's kind of good. All right. And a couple so. people have chimed in that uh, they've seen texture powder before, but didn't really know how it was used. Oh, well, this helps. Yeah. I've got... Brown all over me. And we've got other tutorials as well that show you not only how to make, um, you know, randomized texture like this, but show you how to put it over a stencil so you can make an embossed finish. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're waiting for this, but I think I'm going to just tackle this guy right here because it's just tacky enough where I can touch it and it's not getting on my hands. But I do want to wet distress before it dries too much. So I'm just going to take this uh, shop towel. It's lint free just to add a little bit of water because I want it damp but not soaking. Um, it's very important to have let this uh, this mixture dry overnight because when you go to wet distress, you you don't want to soften the product up and have it come right off. So as long as it's had a good chance of drying, it'll stay on. And uh, now we're just gonna start that weathered distress magic that everyone loves to watch. Um, I like to go up and down or just in little swivel circles. Just depends on what raises the paint. Um, Nancy asked, where did you get the stencil with the maple leaf? I made it with my bare hands. <laughs> um, this was the very first attempt. As you can see, not so perfect. Um, yes, I, just, I didn't use a stencil because I am slathering on um, a wet product. So if you were to lay that stencil down, you may find that it sticks. It might be a little difficult to pull back off. I'm sure it's doable. Um, maybe just lay it down gently, then carve out it, gently lift it up, and then smooth out any areas that pulled from the stencil. That would probably be my way of doing it. Um, you could also wait for the texture powder layer just to dry just a bit and then etch it in, but then you also run the risk of not having very clean edges. So um, the freehand is probably the best, or you could do, um, if you have um, craft foam, you could stamp it in. But even for the um, the stars in the Old Glory here, I, I just painted them on, so. That's where our little artist brushes come in handy. <laughs> yes, definitely. You could um, get clever. Um, I use the end of an eraser to, like a sharpened edge of the eraser, just to create kind of the edges, so it just depends. Mia said, cute, my daughter is making an American flag clothespin wreath. That's a oh, cool sweet. idea. Oh, a little tip when you go to wet distress over various colors. This is red. Um, I'm not going to wet distress right there or I will have a nice big pink smear. So I'm gonna be very careful with my cloth. 
Um, if you're just starting out, maybe use two different cloths for your colors, or three if you're doing the um, American flag. Oh, Nancy chimed back in. She says, stars are easy, maple leaf not so much. Nancy, I'm with you. If it were me, yeah. personally, I would probably kind of cheat and print out a picture of a leaf and like use it to trace yeah. a, a leaf. But yeah, totally up to you and, and how comfortable you are freehanding and being a little creative. <laughs> if it helps freehanding, all I did was make an upside down V, start with the top, and then kind of just make my little crowns and connect them. I don't know if that helps anybody if they're gonna try and freehand their own maple leaf design. But like I said, uh, with practice, it gets a little better. The second maple leaf looks a lot better than the first one. Pearl asked, what is the red paint called? Devotion. I'm gonna show you right now. It's our beautiful bright red on the Oops. main 35. Uh, this right here is Devotion. Yeah. Beautiful, bright, just kind of fire truck red. <laughs> I'm really going to work the edges because I want this kind of vintage effect happening here. So the, the devotion is coming off just a little bit, revealing the dark rose texture powder mix. I'm kind of working in any direction, just trying to bring it up a bit. I'm loving all of this that's coming around mm -hmm. in the random so I'm going to go in with the white hair colors after I worked so hard to keep them separate. And Samantha says, I love the wet distressing technique. Oh, yeah. it's easy and forgiving. Definitely. Yeah. It offer, it. I'd say they all kind of offer similar looks, but it all does depend on how you apply it, um, like how you're working it. But maybe um, just a softer finish. Nancy says, how can I find where to buy your paint in California? Uh, we have a store locator on our website. Use your zip code or your town. That's probably the best way. Or you can pop into the chat and just ask us direct. We can look that up for you. I know offhand we have quite a few, so I wouldn't be able to tell you where and which. Sorry. But yeah, the store locator is super handy because it'll pull up um, all the retailers in your area that are, that are close to your zip code. Oh, contaminated a little bit of my white here. Just gonna wash that out. Oh, Teresa says, I don't trust myself freehand, but I guess if you practice a few times, yeah. I've found good ones online and printed ones off for other art projects. Yeah. Wonderful, yeah. There's workarounds to it, definitely. Sorry, I'm covering it up here. If you find that you've distressed too much, the good old trick is to just wait for that patch to dry and just touch it up with some more paint. So if I don't like the random patchy looks that I'm getting, I might just fill it in a little bit, but I kind of like what's happening here. Just trying to find a clean spot to my towel. Mess really on. And just a reminder for anybody tuning in, here are our finished projects. And this up here is our giveaway prize. Make sure you leave a comment below and tell us um, about some DIY patriotic decor projects that you've done in the past. Doesn't have to be painting, can be anything you want. Um, we're going to draw one winner at the end of the video who's going to get this pint of texture powder four sample jars of paint in the colors that you need to recreate these flags, and a set of artist brushes. Um, Kristen says, can you do this wet distress look with all-in-one paint? Yes, you can. Uh, that's actually what I'm using, so it's perfect. Yes. Um, the the all-in-one decor paint is very forgiving. I let this dry for about 10 minutes before I'm tackling it now. If you find it's coming up too easily or in big chunks, stop. It hasn't had enough time to dry. Might just need a bit more. Oops, trying to keep the brown from bleeding through. And even if it does, I kind of like it. Karen says, I'd love to paint a patriotic dough bowl for a gift to my daughter. Oh, cool. Nice. Oh, um, Elna did a Canadian flag cake for Canada Day. Oh, That's cool. Nice. Is it red and white on the inside too? That'd be nice. All right, so I think I've got that pretty much aged the way I like it. I tackled the most raised edges first, so I'm pretty happy with that. Mm -hmm. I think I might use my sanding block just to finish the rough edges here. Um, you, This is um, just a typical wood canvas from the dollar store. You could also, if you were really um, clever with it, you could put this whole thing on the inside and have kind of like a frame look, um, but it might just get a little gunky on the inside. So if you tape that off, I don't know. Just depends on what you're looking for. I like the other side just to hang on the wall and it's just got a, a nice crisp look. You could stain the edges with our smoky quartz or graphite glaze, kind of just to blend in. 
Another thing would be to actually put the glaze on top just for added texture and aging if you weren't already satisfied with how this looks. So that's just our little mock-up for the Canadian flag there. Oh, Stephanie says she did an American theme wreath out of a wood bushel lid. Came out great. That's cool. Wonderful. I love a good upcycle like that. <laughs> Samantha, another Samantha says she usually does paper crafts for her home decor projects, like banners and stuff, but these are adorable. Nice. I'm glad you like them. Just gonna put my dirty oh, Elna with her cake. It clarified. She says it was a white poke cake with strawberry jello poured in the holes. Yum. That's cool. I like that Thank idea. <laughs> Very clever. Okay, so I'm now going to do the uh, American flag here. Kind of a little backwards. I showed you the end before the beginning. Um, so we just finished painting that and distressing it to its finished product. It had, I let the whole mix sit overnight before I started painting it. So I'm going to take my putty knife. I found this was just the easiest. Make sure you've got a big enough bowl to scoop it out. Just going to plop that right on there. It made a bit of a mess, so just with every pass, I'm trying to keep the ends clean, kind of. You're wanting a moderate thin coat, just enough to etch into. The, the thicker the coat, the longer it will take to dry, so just keep that in mind. Uh, but if it's too thin, it will dry before you have a chance to etch your design in. So kind of just get it right, <laughs> best <laughs> advice. First, just try and get it all to the edges. Um, I painted over it, but there were a couple gaps right here where I didn't actually have texture powder reaching to the edge, but it did cover up with the paint quite nicely. So if you do find you miss and you kind of just like let it stay like that, if you're going for a heavily distressed uneven look, then absolutely go for that. But And just note, um, I'm just spreading it around so it's not going to look like this quite yet. There are little air bubbles, but they will uh, dissipate. <laughs> Pearl just said mud pies. I was thinking the exact <laughs> same thing, Pearl. <laughs> yes, you always just wanted to play around with this. Now you can. This is grown up mud pies. <laughs> Depending on how much cleanup you want to do as well, maybe for the kids. <laughs> I know I would have loved to play with stuff like this. Right. Just trying to get it all around. Krista says, love the Canadian flag, working on a project now to bring to my sister in Germany next month to put in her garden shed um, that she painted Canada red. Nice. Oh, nice. <laughs> well, this would definitely go. Devotion yeah. and uh, vanilla frosting might be the thing. So just trying to get it all to the edge. It looks like this step is fairly forgiving too. There's really no right yeah. or wrong to it. <laughs> um, I did get, I feel like I've gotten the ratio pretty good. It might be a bit runny, but I think it's all right. If, the, if you find that it's too runny and you go to etch in your design and the design is just kind of molding black back into a flat surface, you may need to just scrape that off and apply just a bit more texture powder. I didn't have to do that with my demo. Um, oops. And just make sure you clean up the edges when you're done. I'm just gonna try and get this all to the sides. This was probably the longest and most finickiest part. Um, the rest of the flag is freehand, but I did use uh, rulers just the old artist trick of hovering it to create those nice straight edges. And as Mary pointed out at the beginning of this video, just in case anybody missed it, um, you don't have to use a special putty knife like this. Nope. I've um, used many other tools. Uh, I think I started the demo with an old credit card, uh, but this is just a piece of cardboard that's um, serrated, so it's nice. Um, if you do uh, use just like a random piece of cardboard, just make sure it's a nice crisp edge or you will have maybe just extra lines that you don't want or you might be frustrated that they won't come off. So that could be it. Just gonna clean up the sides here because I goofed. Right. Don't forget to post a like or a love or a wow if you are really loving how these rustic painted signs are turning out. I think they're pretty cute. <laughs> Krista says, this looks like how I spread my cake icing. <laughs> yep. So now I'm just going to make a couple rough lines. I've got the smooth texture, but now I want a bit more. And as always, work flat down with the texture powder. It will run slowly, so when you're done, don't set it up and look at it quite yet. Just let that sit. 
Well, good question from Amanda. She says, does that clean out of the bowl pretty easily? It does. Um, I'm using a porcelain bowl just because I found it does wash out a little easier. If you let this dry overnight and it's a plastic dish, you'll have a, a bit of a time. But it is water-based, so with enough scrubbing, you could get it off. Absolutely. But I just found this bowl was easier. Um, Pearl asks, so the purpose of the texture paste is to try to make your surface uneven. Yes, it's a thickening medium to keep the paint in place so it dries to a nice hard finish once I'm done. Um, it looks like I may have put a bit too much paint in here because it's settling, but I, I can still work with this so I'm going to. Um, this I'm just going to use this as a rough template for my American flag for the blue section. So like I said, I kind of just cheat here and just like to oops, carve out my lines. And I like to keep the edge of the palette knife clean because the more you carve, the more you collect on your um, carving tool and then you'll create uneven texture if it's not clean as you go. Nancy asked, is your mixture about the same as sour cream consistency? No, uh, more like icing. Like a buttercream icing yeah. for cake, yeah. So this one's a little thin, but just a little bit thicker would have been perfect. That was a good example that you can see there yeah. how, how slowly it drips. Yeah. There's, there's seven stripes and then eight stripes. Thirteen for the British colonies. Had a little history lesson when I was doing this. <laughs> and the Americans figured out their flag pretty early on. Uh, 1777, they nailed down their design. We took till 1965. It's <laughs> good. <laughs> oh, I think your consistency's turning out all right, though. Yeah, if you found that you make the line and it's immediately rushing back in, almost like it's doing now, um, you would <laughs> want to add just a bit more. Yeah, so we probably could have gone a little bit thicker on this one, but it's actually not too, too bad. I think it's going to turn out all right. I think you could probably also just let it dry for a little bit longer, too. Yeah. Would that that would help It's not This will thicken pretty it up. much stay the way it is. If I saw it before my eyes, just going right back into it, I would scrape this off and I would just uh, add a little powder to the batch and try again. No problem. Um, I am happy with this though. It's just a smidge on the runny side, but texture powder is working for me. So I'm Helen says, I want to make two flags, one maple leaf and one Union Jack as she's nice. dual nationality. That would nice. be cool. We should do a, a Union Jack sometime. I think that would be a lot of fun. Yeah. So just scraping away here. You could use the cardboard. Uh, the thinner is probably the best. You have more control. My stamp idea won't quite work with the consistency of this one, but I am just going to carve out the stars, I think, when I'm done. Nice and slow, and if you're quick and careful, you can just smooth this up. So just smooth it out. Try and blend in with that other line, and you can fix it. And you might even find you have some extra texture you like, so. Amber says, I would love to paint a flag to put my very front door as a welcome sign. Wonderful. That's a good one. So 50 stars. Just going to loosely carve those out. I am going to be painting over this when it's all done. So I'm just going to outline kind of where my stars are. They kind of have them off kilter, not all lined up. They've gone through many different designs. I think it started with a circle and then as they were welcoming states they would add a new one and then mm -hmm. halfway gave up and went back to the the circle of the 13 colonies. So Pearl said, so could you press side. something like lace into it to make an imprint? You could. Um, that would play into the dry times. I would let this sit for maybe 20 minutes before I tried that lace idea. Um, you don't want, uh, you could do just a little sample, push the little lace in. If it's coming back, all of it's coming back and the lace is dirty, give it a little bit of time and just wait. You kind of want it just a slightly hardened clay kind of texture so you can press it in lift it up and absolutely you could definitely do that kind of like the the modeling clay and I would probably pick um a thicker like Maybe, almost yeah. more like a crocheted lace something that's got a bigger texture to it yeah because yeah, if it's too thin you probably won't see much of a pattern at all it'll just yeah <laughs> so we've got to let that one dry um so we're gonna this would dry overnight and then I would gently distress with the wet-free cloth like you guys saw me do in the middle of the video. I'm not going to lift it up because it is wet. 
just going to turn it around for you. So you'd get, I think if this was just a little thicker of texture powder, you'd see a bit more um, settling as it is. But I'm pretty happy. Once that's dry, it's going to look great. And then I'm going to paint in all the lines and I will uh, post on the Facebook page what it looks like at the end. But yeah, I hope you guys just enjoyed this. We're going to do uh, last, sec last minute uh, comments for the giveaway, that pint of texture powder four samples of paint and our awesome artist brushes, forgive the dirty hands, um, you will get a texture powder I didn't use in this video, full brand new pint of texture powder. <laughs> so all you had to do was comment on what kind of patriotic national uh, crafts you're working on for Canada or Independence Day, and you could be our lucky winner. Um, so I hope everybody liked that, I hope you took some cool ideas, and maybe this could be applied on any kind of art surface, a canvas, this was just a wood piece, imagine what you could do on a piece of furniture or something, so just depends on what you're working on. So uh, last minute commenters and we're going to draw our winner. Alright, and if anybody does try this out at home, um, make sure you take photos and send them yes. to us because we'd love to see what you create. Let me just see if we can draw our winner here. Last second chance to get your name in. <laughs> Okay, and our giveaway winner is Melissa Kenny. Yay, good job, Melissa. You're the winner of our texture powder pint, four samples of paint, and our artist brushes. I do recommend picking dark roast. That's just the base layer that I made with texture powder for um, an authentic rustic finish, but any four colors. Congratulations. So thanks everybody else for watching. Thanks for tuning in, and I'm going to probably be doing many more videos, uh, so stay tuned for those. And next week we've got another uh, retailer video coming, so that'll be fun. And I hope you guys enjoyed our texture powder video. Have a great rest of your day.